hard and determined with finality the 2022 presidential election dispute and ruled on the petitions that were filed by their aggrieved contestants and their supporters. Nevertheless, I have carefully listened to the issues raised by my friend, the Honorable Raila Odinga. In times like this, it is not about who is right or who is wrong. Like Winston Churchill said, I dare, and I dare say, and I quote, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak, but it is also what it takes to sit down and listen. I have always been ready to engage Kenyans of all walks of life, including elected and appointed leaders from across the political divide and the religious fraternity on how to make our country better and prosperous. And in the last six months, I have talked to many religious leaders. I have talked to many elected leaders from across the political divide. My door still remains open for honest, objective, and sincere deliberations based on the rule of law and the Constitution. On the reconstitution of the future Electoral Commission, the selection panel that currently is in office is a creation of the law that was passed by the two chambers of parliament in response to a court decision. The court clearly stated that one institution, and in this case, parliament, cannot dominate the process of establishing an electoral commission at the expense of other institutions that have a role to play in the country's electoral process. However, considering the matters raised by our friends in the opposition, I suggest a bipartisan engagement in Parliament on the reconstitution of the IEBC panel within the parameters of the law and the Constitution. In any case, as a Democrat and guided by the Constitution, I, on the 9th of December 2022, sent a memorandum to the speakers of the National Assembly and Senate requesting the purposive intervention on implementation of the two-thirds gender rule, entrenchment in the constitution of the Constituency Development Fund, Senate Oversight and, gender, um, and National Gender Affirmative Action Funds, establishment of the position of the Leader of Opposition and the improvement of parliamentary oversight of the Executive. And for the record, Parliament has already approved the parliamentary oversight of the Executive and shortly, Cabinet Secretaries will be appearing before the House to answer questions. The other items are still um, in Parliament. The IEBC selection panel and the future process of recruitment of its commissioners could as well be part of a conversation leading to constitutionally and legally binding proposals through a bipartisan parliamentary process. In, in other words, I am suggesting that the issues that have been raised by our friends on the matter of IEBC, my suggestion is that this matter can be handled in Parliament by a bipartisan parliamentary process so that we can agree on what it is they have an issue with and we can adjust as is agreed and as necessary. And therefore, in these circumstances and in view of the recent events that led to loss of life and destruction of property in the demonstrations that have occasioned in our country for the last uh, two weeks, I urge my brother Raila Odinga and the opposition to call off the demonstrations and to give this bipartisan approach a chance for us to take the country forward. Meanwhile, I call on all Kenyans to remain peaceful and law-abiding. 
And I assure them that the government of Kenya will continue with its sacred duty of protecting their lives and their property, including their businesses. Thank you very much. I can take one or two questions. Jina langu ni Joel Chacha kutoka Runinga ya K24. Baadhi ya matakwa ya azimio vile vile ni kusena na gharama ya juu ya maisha. Je, wa Kenya watarajie kupungua kwa bei ya bidhaa muhimu kufikia lini? Tuko na, mba, eh, tuko na mpango kamili ambaye tunashughulikia gharama ya maisha. Kwa mara ya kwanza tumesajili wakulima milioni tano tuko na mbolea milioni sita. Saa hizi wakulima wetu wanashughulika na kupanda chakula kote katika taifa letu la Kenya. Juzi nilitangaza ya kwamba tumeagiza chakula kutoka nje na itaanza kufika wiki hii tuhakikishe ya kwamba pale kutakapotokea pengo ya kukosekana kwa chakula kabla hatujapata ile chakula ambayo tunazalisha mashambani na wakulima wetu tutakuwa na nafasi ya kutumia chakula ambayo tumeagiza kutoka eh, nchi za nje tumeagiza mahindi tumeagiza mchele tumeagiza maharagwe tumeagiza chakula ya aina nyingi ambazo tayari na tayari tulipatiana ilani kwa wakulima wetu kwamba kama kuna mkulima yeyote ambaye bado wako na chakula katika magala zao wa eh, waziuze kwa sababu kuanzia mwezi huu tutapata chakula kutoka eh, nje ya nchi na pili ni watangazie ya, ya wa Kenya ya kwamba mahali tulipata gharama ya chakula pale ilikuwa shilingi elfu, eh, shilingi 230 fikia sasa ni shilingi 180 kumaanisha ya kwamba zile hatua tumezichukua zimeanza kupunguza gharama ya maisha lakini mpango yetu ni mpango ambayo inaitwa sustainable ndio sababu tunashughulika na wakulima wetu My name is Chemutai Goin from Citizen TV and um, in paving way to this bipartisan process um, that will initiate in parliament if it doesn't bear any fruit and the <coughs> positions that have been taken by yourself your deputy and several other leaders in government regarding um, a handshake or a working relationship do we then foresee this possibly leading to that um, if it is for nation than for self chemuta i didn't i didn't understand what you said sorry sorry yeah, somebody was talking to me here so pole yeah that's a former colleague um, my question was um, this bipartisan process that is being initiated possibly that will start in parliament if it doesn't bear any fruit and there are positions that have been taken by yourself your deputy and other leaders in your government regarding a handshake uh, do we foresee an, a position where maybe there will be softening of stances and a possible working relationship even if it does not translate to sharing of positions in government you know as a believer in the rule of law and as a believer in running an accountable government our position is that we should never be in the position that this country was put by the handshake where there is no distinction between government and the opposition once you compromise accountability and oversight you are in for a lot of trouble our position is that we want to engage our brothers and sisters on the other side on issues that are important to the people of Kenya them as an opposition us as a government that way the system of checks and balances remains intact uh, mr president i am sydney chazima from ntv um I have one or two questions. One, in a parliament where the ruling party or the ruling coalition enjoys a very high majority, 
how, how bipartisan will that process be? And then secondly, um, you've only touched on one of the issues that uh, the opposition was uh, putting forward as uh, part of their demands. Uh, there are issues to do with the servers, there are issues to do with the uh, high cost of living, which you have, you have mentioned. Um, then thirdly, this is to do with the demonstrations. Um, we've seen uh, some kind of brute force against the media from the police. We would like you to address that. Mm. On your first issue, um, we've been this road before. We've um, sorted out uh, matters in a bipartisan way in Parliament before, irrespective of what numbers there are. And in any case, the numbers in Parliament, uh, the, the difference is not that much from where I sit. So I do not see any threat of any side. And in any case, when we engage in a bipartisan approach, it is not a game of numbers. It is a game of reason and how we um, uh, put our arguments in a manner that carries not one side, but all sides. That is the essence of a bipartisan approach. Um, I have responded for, in my statement, if you, if you read carefully my statement, I have responded to all the issues that our good friends on the other side um, have engaged in. And finally, we are great believers in free media. And any engagement that puts the media in danger is not acceptable. However, in the context of the violent demonstrations, you agree that there has been a lot of violence against citizens, many citizens, properties, burning down of buildings, you know, including churches. In that confusion, there could have been incidences where the media was caught in the fray. I do not think there is any deliberate attack on the media. And if there was such deliberate attack on the media, I can tell you we would be opposed to it and we would not support it and we would actually uh, deal with it because we believe that the media should be left to carry out its duties, its uh, broadcasts, irrespective of how unfair they may be. It doesn't really matter. But the media should be left alone, irrespective of how biased they may be. Okay. Any other, Maneno? <laughs>